Hi guys, welcome back to another video where today we've got something a little bit more interesting. Basically, I've got a property out in the countryside near, near to where I live and uh, they want a smart home installing. It's going to be a long project, a long, long time, a lot of work. But the main thing that they uh, that I'm starting on right now is the plant room. So I thought it'd be quite cool to make a video on how I do a plant room, how I do all the trunking, how I design it in the style that I like. I'm not saying at all that's the best way of doing it, but it's the way that I found works for me over the years. Um, I've got Ted with me today, who is uh, just finishing off some assignments that he's late for in college. So he's quickly doing it in the van while I get set up. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoy this video. If you do, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. It helps me massively. And let's get to the job. So this is the house here from the outside. And I've got to say, everything has been done so nicely. Like the guy's got some pretty insane attention to detail. But he's done all of it himself. And the best thing is, he's not a builder. It just goes to show that sometimes having the right attitude and resources as a DIYer can actually honestly sometimes be better than a professional with a bad attitude. Okay, so this is inside the property here. So this is gonna be plant room number one. So this is where all the electrical stuff is going. Um, I say plant room, it's a very simple, very basic room inside of here, which I thought it'd be ideal to film this. After the last video that I put out, so many people saying, oh, how do you do trunking? So I'll show you like how you can get joints, nice like that, nice and tight. Um, but I put this up yesterday. Um, but you can see the time lapse of that. Welcome back. So yeah, that was all put in yesterday. This is a nice simple plant room basically which enables me to explain things a little bit better and a little bit clearer when it's really complicated. So we've got a load of heating controls and stuff which we can be going underneath here. So you can see there you've got a big tank ready for a uh, heat pump. So that's going in there. We've got an underfloor heating manifold underneath here with a fair few zones on that. So we're using heat miser smart controls for everything. We're using the Apple Home Kit to control all of the lighting. All of the lighting is going to be Lutron. Wiring is going to be done in conduit as well, similar to my last rewire video where I'm in conduit. So this app here, this is SketchUp. So it's a free software that you get from uh, Google. It's Ted's on-site guide, nice mouth pad. So we're going to quickly sketch up this room, start placing things where they need to go. If I shout you measurements, do you want to build these walls out? Yeah, go on. I'll do the base so place. let's do it from from here round to here because this is all we're really concerned about. And then yeah. the door frame and stuff is kind of external to us. Yeah. So, start with so the I'll go from there. the edge of the trunking to the wall. All right. Oh, with the base, yeah? Well, yeah. it's kind of the same. So yeah. the base is going to be 700 mil. 1330. So then height-wise, I'll measure it up to the actual ceiling because we might have to put things above this. 235 centimetres high. That's the basic room. You can see there, we have our room. So now if we lay out the trunking. For, it's basically the whole perimeter of that, so that'll be the whole thing, and it is... Uh, from the ceiling. It is 110 mil from the ceiling. It should be 100 mil deep. All right. Yeah, 100 mil deep. Bringing that out, 100 mil in the edges. Oh yeah, paint that thing metal. Uh, 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 metal. Let's go. Let's go. Corrugated, shiny. Yeah, let's see how that looks. Oh, that looks horrible. That does look horrible, but it, it also does make it quite clearly still. Yeah, here we go. That's better. Oh yeah. That's what that's the want. one. That's Oi. what they're looking for. Oh, you've put end caps on there. We haven't got end caps yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> keep them, keep them, keep them. That is now. If you zoom out, in literally about two minutes. That is our plant room modelled. That's me, hey, man, I don't have a, that big a gut. <laughs> okay, so now let's model our consumer unit. Let's measure this, 470 wide, so 47 centimetres wide by 134.5 centimetres tall. So we'll have another sticker trunking coming down. In fact, have another sticker trunking coming down 134 from the top from the top right in the corner 100 mil same width as that so that'll be our trunk in here 
and then that will line up roughly. Yeah. That will be the spacing of where the board's going. So I'm thinking it will make sense. It would be nice to see it in CAD, but if we have a stick of trunk in, distribution board, stick of trunk in, and then I want to see if there's still space for my inverter, because we've got a solar inverter going in here, we've got a Tesla gateway going in here, we've got a ton of conduit, flexible conduit that needs to be made off. This is what the subscribers want to see. That's what the subscribers, I think they want to see you now, to be honest, Ted. I'm going to be honest, but there we go. So now we have our plant room starting to take shape. See, it's very quick, very simple. Do you want to give them a little scroll, maybe from that angle underneath? Can you change the outfit of that fella? I'm pretty sure you can. You can download <laughs> you can, different think, Yeah, you different can download people. people. All right, let's put, let's see how it looks then if we put another stick of trunking just to the left of it there. You can see already the benefits. Oh, do you want to get in? Oh, no, yeah, I've got one. <laughs> you can see already the benefits of doing stuff in CAD. Um, Ted is wicked at it. Um, and Shout out Mr. Singler. Yeah, there we go. And the cool thing is now we've got that in the file. What file do we save this in? Uh, SKP. Perfect. So that will now, the SketchUp file will come over to my iPad where I have the SketchUp app on my, by the way, this is not sponsored by SketchUp. This is a free, I'm pretty sure it's free on Windows as well, isn't it? Uh, Windows is free. Yeah, I, I, I have to pay for it on my iPad, but it's, it's like £100 a year or £95 a year or something. Mm -hmm. um, and now I can get that on my iPad. I can show the client. I can say, this is exactly where you want this. This is exactly where that needs to be. Um, and they can actually visualize it. And it literally has taken us what, all of 15 minutes, probably in this edited down to about two um, to do. So now we can actually see if the inverter and if the gateway will fit in there rather than just measuring and marking and, and guessing. It's better to actually sketch it up. Now we have our cut list, it makes it way easier. Benefit to doing something like that, taking an extra 15 minutes, even if it's an hour, take an extra hour in the morning to make a plan for something like that. It means that if you've got multiple workers on site, um, I mean, Ted's great anyway, I don't really need to give him that kind of guidance, but I'm only squatting because I don't know where the thing ends. I feel like my head could be cut off here, so I'm squatting down. Let's just sit down, <laughs> take a knee. It means that I can give someone a drawing, which is, I used to work for this guy. If you're in Leeds and you need an electrician, give Moorfield's Electrical a shout because they're brilliant legends and they've taught me so much. Like, they're the ones that taught me to mitre trunking like that. I did some BMS work for them and uh, they're the ones that taught me the whole overlap and pop rivet and they're, they're the, the boys. They used to do that. So they'd give me a CAD drawing in the morning. I, I couldn't use CAD then, but they just gave me an AutoCAD reader on my phone and say, here's your work for the day. And I go into a cupboard and go, oh, okay, yeah, I can just measure that, measure that, cut that. I can say to Ted now, all right, there's your drawing for the day. Here's your CAD document. Just layer the bits I need him to cut. There's your cut list. You can, here's how you measure off of it. Go and cut it. So. It's beneficial, even if it takes a bit more time. So if you're doing a plant room or something a bit more complicated, where you're trying to work it out, sometimes drawing it out is the best way of doing it. So this here is where we are running the supply cable from. So this cable, which was lovingly run in yesterday by Chile Electrical, we've had to chase it into the wall a bit just to make sure we're definitely 50 mil deep with it because it's unfortunately got to be run out of zone because that's where the, the meter box comes in. And what I might well do is end up putting a socket or something there next to it just to make that then become a safe zone um, to drill if you want safe zone documents and guidance. Basically it's 150 from edges and in line with sockets and switches vertically and horizontally. I can put a document to it in the description below if you're wondering. So this here is the uh, meter. So this is our three phase supply with a funny saying saying, do not put the fuses back in. The, L the AC phases on the LV are shorted out. So that's not fun. So I don't plan on putting those fuses in until British Gas come and sort that out. And this is where we're gonna be putting in our switch fuse. Um, because the distribution board is located in the middle of the house. So we have a hole there going through and uh, we'll put the tails through that cavity into here, put in a switch fuse or I was even thinking maybe some kind of um, MCB, like an 80 amp MCB in an enclosure because it will fit in there better. But the only trouble is with that, if you lose one phase, you're going to lose all of them. If you overload a phase, you're going to lose all, all of them rather than the benefits of a switch fuse is they're individually fused. Um, but I don't really see a property of this size in the design at the minute that I'm giving it. I don't see a property of this size very likely to overload the phases. So I think we'll just keep it at 80 amps. That's still, what, 240 amps 
of power, which is, in my opinion, tons for a small house like this. Let's get putting this trunking up. This is all done, ready to pop up here, either side of the uh, distribution board. But I think what we'll do first is we'll just dry fit it, mark out where we want the holes to go, because we need to cut out the trunk in here as well. I'm thinking just like a 50 mil bush and a 50 mil bush, and then all the cables can come down through there. So I'm gonna pass us the frame of that board, please, matey. Not sponsored, not paid. Um, bought these with my own money, I think in cities or somewhere. Orbix screws, and they're so expensive. They're so nice, and it's just nice sometimes. Okay, you're losing a tiny bit more money, profit off of your job, but it makes your life easier, and it makes it looks so much nicer. So, yeah, they're the ones that I prefer to use now. Like good quality fit fixings shouldn't just be left to the kitchen fitters. What's ironic is usually, like you can see when a DIYer has done a consumer unit, usually they have better fixings than the electricians who are just using normal non-pan head, um, like countersunk screws and red plugs for absolutely everything going. Oh, beautiful. Funny, because the era of the house basher really is dying because Domestic work is not what it used to be. It's no longer just three cables, mate. Like, you can be a domestic electrician, and nowadays you're expected to know like smart stuff, you're expected to know controls, um, heating systems, commercial heating systems often. Like, you can't be going into nice homes and not have at least a base understanding of KNX or Lutron or Homeworks and the various systems that are out there now, Crestron. Um, just because consumers say, oh, well, it's cables, an electrician did it, you should be able to do it. It's impossible to be an expert on everything, but at least just to have the right contact list so that when you get those phone calls, you at least know who to call, who you're gonna call. Um, like for this one, it was gonna get complicated because uh, I wasn't sure what exactly what lighting system would be best. So I've got my friend Ollie in from Chile Electrical. Yes. There's no shame in not knowing everything. So I'm thinking we cut in a hole up there, a hole up there, see realistically if that's gonna be enough space. If not, maybe we just cut ourselves a couple of backup holes just in there and there. But what I'll do as well, while I've got the board mounted. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is the first time I've I've looked really short on camera. I'll drill four mil pilot holes across everywhere where I want the bush and lock rings to go. So that way I'm not guessing, trying to line up the holes between the trunking and the board. So it's better to just dry fit it, punch all my little holes through, then I can take it apart, put it on the bench, drill all of my bigger holes with my, got my hole, got my hole saw here. Yep, that's the right size. Drill all my bigger holes and then come back to it. And another thing that's really nice to use if you want your, whole source to stay fresh and last a much longer time to get some cutting compound just cheap off of Amazon or wherever. Maybe I'll put it on my tall monster thing so that you can actually find it a bit easier. On tall monster now I have a load of recommended products so that when I'm shouting stuff out you can go onto tall monster and there's the oi collection you can buy all the merch and tools and all the rest of it. So right let's get these all marked out. So that's done. So we've got them holes drilled out. So let me show you where that is. I just saw the pilot holes. Oh, cut my finger. Probably should start wearing gloves, really. Um, so that is all the way down there to the bottom. But maybe this is OCD, probably. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the laser on just because I want to make sure these holes are all at exactly the same placement and height. So I've got the set square to set the depth. But I've got the laser now to set across which way is which because it's going to really, really annoy me if uh, they're all different heights. So let's set up the laser. Can you see what it is yet? Oh no, you can't say that anymore. Um, you see, we've got our nice drawing there. Boop, boop, boop. And that's it in the real life. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna show you the hack to end all hacks. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. All right, we'll put it there because that's where the uh, door frame's going. Yeah. 
if I hit the one place where there's actually a screw. Um, okay, let's stick it on there. There we go. Now we have a line to follow on both sides. And you can say all you like, that probably be the commenters come in with their, oh yeah, but in the real world you can't do that. Yeah, we're not YouTube, da, 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 da. I'm probably gonna make like 200 pound from this video, of which most, if not all, will go to the editor. <laughs> so it's nothing to do with real world and YouTube reality. I've been a bit OCD in how I've done things from a long time since before the era of YouTube. Do you like this one? Do you reckon this one would make Mr. Singular proud? I was just setting this up ready for Ted. Look, I put all the blocks in nice, so we have something to push up against, doing all this, and then literally bang, bit, and snapped my brand new bit in there. That is so horrendously annoying. I think, luckily I have a spare one, but still, that is so typical me to happen. board but I've put some cardboard over it just hooked it inside just to stop matey here from drilling straight through with his uh, drill so and it just protects it from the metal show off a little bit better Oof. <laughs> man this is rough when you're this zoomed in you give kids nightmares well, sure there shouldn't be any kids watching our channel well to some people Ted unfortunately they would count you as a kid oh, oh. no disrespect I'm sorry do you know what Ted said to me the other day the most hurtful thing was he meant it genuinely and he meant it nicely. He saw me using Snapchat and he went, oh, no way, you use Snapchat? Oh, I thought that was a new thing. I didn't know old people had that. I was like, one, I'm not old. Two, <laughs> Snapchat is not a new thing. Like, well, yeah, wow. So this is the first time in a long time I've been called old. But anyway, he's going to drill out all these horrible holes now as a uh, thanks for saying that. And uh, we'll get that mounted on the wall. Okie dokie, so we've got the uh, trunking all cut and ready to go. So you see, we've got the bush and lock, lock rings cut in there. So that's ready for everything to come out into the trunking. I thought I'm gonna tell Ted a joke when he gets back. A bit bad really, I feel like I've not told him any good jokes today. He's come to expect that of me. Kind of his quality joke dispenser. Did I ever tell you I used to work at an Indian takeout? No. Oh mate, it was crazy. They were super, super secretive though, of all their recipes. All right. Yeah, like even, especially their, uh, the recipe for their flatbreads. They made me sign a non-disclosure. You're definitely not feeling well today. I don't know how you're not on the floor and stitches on that one. I'll come back to you when we are all finished over here and then I'm gonna get Ted to do his first ever SWA cable and it's quite a big one as well. Well, it's not a big one, is it? But it's big for your first ever. Oh, I've got a chunk of finger hanging off now. Um, big for his first ever SWA cable. So I'm gonna get him to terminate this four core 16 mil uh, into the board. Right. We can't play that while we're recording, but Ted is now gonna terminate this cabler here. Where are you gonna terminate it into, Ted? Uh, it's gonna come down the trunk in and into there. Right there. You're right. And have you ever done an SWA cable before? Never. Well, then this is one for the archives for you. Right. First things first, probably be easier to get a bench so we're higher up. That's a good idea. First things first, your boot or your shroud. Put that on. So you watched the video last night of how to do it, yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to put that on in a nice tight manner. You're on the right track already. Nice. He's as much a media apprenticeship now as it is a uh, <laughs> one. You've probably cut that a little bit tight. 
So what I would do personally, if you want something you're solid to cut it up against, is I'd slide it down there and then cut it whilst it's on. Oh, I see. So like, kind of yeah. circumcise it. <laughs> cool, nice tight boot. That's what we like to see. What goes next? How would you put this on? Um, first need to measure the cable. Make no, sure it's just right. slide that on for now. Oh, okay. Keep that all together. You oh, just okay. need to take this little olive bit out. Yeah. And this will just go down there. I'm pretty sure our heads are chopped off right now. Ah! You're oh, right. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> we need a 25mm hole saw. Tape this up so it's not sliding down into your face while you're trying to cut the cable. So get yourself a junior hacksaw. There are gadgets that will do this for you, but it's always better to learn the uh, traditional way first. The thing is, you'll always have one of them around. You might not have one of your fancy pipe cutters and things. So this, I'm just going through it like that until I feel it nick. And then I'm gonna go around and just keep chip, 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 all the way around. I don't wanna cut through the armoring. I just wanna put a little nick in them. Yeah. Nick Bundy. And the, oh, Nick. And the reason you should have been oh, upset I'm yesterday. Be I'm gonna be charged, I'm gonna be in the cell. You are, yeah. Are you confident that's nicked all the way around? So I'm yeah. Check all the way around it, because if it's not, it will be a bit of a nightmare for you. If you're confident, then uh, here's the knife. Time to slice down that arm ring, and uh, the technique for that, no, 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 just in case you miss and cut oh, your yeah. thumb, is, yeah, just go side on. Just a bit more stable. So you what, while he's doing that, why don't we just cut this nice picture of a uh, Soviet pepper pig. Okay, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, for people that aren't familiar with the channel, I'm sorry if that was a bit random for you. Um, if you don't like it, well, you know, there's always uh, other places. And if you do like it, feel free to like and subscribe. And that would be much appreciated. When you've done it really, really nice, you don't even have to bend the arm rings. They will just pop off. Yeah. Nice one. Oh, good man, you're tidying up as well. That is essential. Hey, it's not a... Not a bad job at all, not especially not for your first one. Yeah. Not bad. Probably just could have cut a little bit deeper. I see worse from qualified people, so good job. So now next step is to strip this back, get the olive pushed up, and then tighten this on. Thread ends there, yeah? Yeah. It's so like halfway up this gland. So if you're doing it from halfway up that gland, if you chop it more than there, then you're going to be able to see the metal and then that IP ring. It doesn't matter inside, we could use an outdoor gland inside, it doesn't, an indoor gland because we're inside. So you can't chop more than the, than that amount really. But then if you chop not enough, then it'll be a nightmare getting it on. Lee from Hard Sound Electrics does a lovely short on this. Yeah, I saw that. He does it very, very yeah. he does a nice job of it. So you're getting used to not just having to do complicated electrical work, but also having to be aware of <laughs> where people are watching yeah. from. It's a whole other realm of faff and stress. You can get glanding spanners. And some people get all religious about using them. There's no need. If you have a set of adjustable spanners like these, or some smooth jaw grips like these, they can do absolutely the same job. Is it tightening up? Yeah. Nice. And just for my own OCD sake, would you mind making that go around a tiny bit more so that it's all oh, yeah. flat and in line? There you go, man. Beautiful. Now you can tighten up the compression band bit on the top. And you can tell your friends at college, your first armoured cable was a 16mm 4-core. Can we get a round of, our, round of applause? Do you know what I used to think that was? When you, people used to say, can we get a round of applause? I used to think it was, can we get a round of our paws? And I used to imagine, like, and I always thought it was a cute thing. I was like, oh, that's cute. Can we get a round of our paws? Like our little paws. Like P-A-W-S, but yeah, never mind. Um, back to the electrical work. Are you good? Yep. Lovely stuff. So give it the tug test. You can't. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Respect. Now, slide that boot down. And I'll help you get it in. 
Everybody go congratulate him in the comments. Believe it or not, it's actually an old apprentice that showed me this. That gave me, gave me this idea. I used to heat shrink or tape the ends of my SWAs when I stripped them. I just like it because this can easily start to come apart. Whereas this just having something over the end just keeps the end together and holds it all. But there's an old apprentice that went, oh, why don't you just use a cable tie? I thought, that's actually a good idea. This one you'll be really careful of because if you nick the, nick the inner cores, it's really annoying. There you go. Oh, that's a lovely cable. I don't know what brand that is. That is nice cable. Strips well good. I think that'll be enough actually. What, and just cut it there? That'll do. I won't terminate that yet because we haven't got the, uh, I haven't got a bush and lock ring. Next week when we're back, we'll have another bush and lock rings, a few bush and lock rings short, and uh, we'll put one through there and then we'll terminate it. But that is ready to terminate. And do you know which color order it will go in? Very nice. Yeah, Bang. Bang. That one? Yeah, that's right. Yes. So, brown, black, gray. Yeah. All the old colors. Phase colours with red, yellow, blue. Yeah. So you want to be aware of that because quite often most buildings you go in and still lie in those phase colours. All right, beautiful stuff. Let's get clean. Let's get out of here. Okay, a little bonus clip for everyone that made it this far as a thank you. Um, I'm going to show you exactly how I actually bend and overlap my conduit. So what I want to do is mark wherever the back of the bend is. Let's just say it's the centre here. Mark that down the middle, right? That's the back of your bend. Now, 45 degrees off of that. And 45 degrees off of that. Now, you're gonna cut across the top, across the top. So now you wanna lose all of that top section there and along this line. So that's going to go the whole way along, all of that. And then you're going to lose this section here, or that section doesn't really matter. And then what you'll do is, it will literally fold over itself like that. Once you've cut those out, I'm really tight for time. And I think I ex you probably can guess what I've done from the video anyways, but um, I can't be making noise now to actually demonstrate it. Now, once those sections are gone, on both sides the same, that will literally just fold over and that flap will just slide into there and once that flap there is slidden into there you can just put a pop rivet through that to bolt it in place and that is how you get a perfect 90 degree angle on your trunking and the reason it'll always be perfect is because even if you've not got quite 90 you'll never see the joint there'll never be a gap because you have that overlap of material so up there then walls might not be perfect 90 but it doesn't matter it still looks perfect you don't have a gap because you're not cutting that out because if you cut all of that out and then it ends up being i don't know 80 degrees or 85 degrees then you're going to see a big fat gap and that's going to be ugly so always overlap there you go thank you for watching so that is us all finished now for the day. So the cable is terminated um, down. Ted just asked a good question. He asked what the spreader box is and why it's at the top. It's at the top because I need some space for potentially a mod bus for the solar and some other little bits and pieces. And I wanted to put it in there um, and label it all up. Any other control gear that doesn't need to be accessed by the customer will go inside there. But usually you put it on the bottom because if you have a bigger cable, sometimes if you think the main switch is there, that's not enough space to terminate a cable and bend it in. So you use the spreader box just to give yourself a bit more space basically to bend the cords into the main switch. Um, so that, these off. This is my Unilite fancy little neck torch thing, which is actually so handy. I thought, why am I going to need a neck torch when I have a head torch? Actually, it's so much nicer because I can look round and move my head and the light isn't. So I like it. Yeah, I think it's a nice job. It's come through well. Um, so the next step when we come back will be connecting up the outside switch fuse and starting to make drawings and designs for the plant room in there. So that's all the heating controls, which I know a lot of people have been asking about. Can you do a video on heating controls? So 
that will be the next video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Do you want to say goodbye to Ted? Say goodbye. Goodbye. Join me next time in Berlin, where Stuart falls off his skates and we connect up a ton of spin bikes to the grid. Yeah.